both the prince and the stove is Leanna right here's a stove pipe for you honey so you can be the stove but the prince the, the, neither the prince or the stove have any speaking parts because Leanna is a member of SAG and if she actually speaks since this is being recorded we all have to pay her $50 and like give her a trailer and an assistant and everything else so don't let her sing anything okay because this is all about this is about my, my union your union your union buddy. I'm hearing this and I need to hear this <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Yay! Okay. So. <laughs> here we here we present to you by the Brothers Grimm and Alethea Contes, the Goose Girl. Once upon a time, there lived a queen whose husband had died many years ago. The queen had a daughter. When the princess was of an age, the queen packed her up with a dowry and sent her off to marry the prince of a faraway land. Here you are, dear. Golden goblets, silverware. Take this jewelry and these trinkets and this talking house. <laughs> Hi there! And this maid I just hired without doing a background check. <laughs> And some blood, because I'm a sorceress. Did I mention that? You can probably do magic too, sweetheart. Keep that in mind, because it might come in handy later in the story. I'll put three drops on this handkerchief, keep it with you, and it will watch over you. You got that? Oh, yes, thank you, my royal mother dearest. Goodbye forever, dear. <laughs> the princess Falada and the evil maid set out for the faraway land. When they got tired, they stopped by a stream. Dear maid, would you please fetch me some water in my golden goblet? You got two legs. Go fetch it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the drops of blood watching over the princess voiced their displeasure. If your mother only knew, her royal heart would break in two. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a drink of water. I'll be fine. This happened twice more on the journey. The third time, the handkerchief fell out of the princess's bodice, and the three drops of blood floated away. No! <laughs> the princess didn't notice what had happened, but her maid did. <laughs> New rules, chicken. I'm the princess now. You can be the maid. I'll take all your clothes and that horse, too. And if either one of you says one word to a living soul, you give us a necklace? <laughs> <laughs> we understand, uh, Your Highness. Why don't you fight back? Aren't you like a sorceress or something? This may be a really great fairy tale, but I'm still a, a passive female main character with no agency. <laughs> That's a shame. They traveled like this for the rest of the way. Finally, they arrived at the faraway land of the prince, where his father, the wise king, still ruled. Princess, allow me to welcome you to your new home. Uh, thanks, Dad. Here, I found this girl on the road, but she's not a very good companion. Can you give her a job? I, um, don't really have... Oh, I know, she can tend the geese with Whittle Conlad. Great. Here, hon. Shove horse. <laughs> this is a terrible horse. Take it to the knacker and have its head chopped off, will you? There's a good prince. I'm... 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 No, 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 really, we're good. No, we're good. We're good. Just quietly smoke. Sweet. So just go drag Falada away. <laughs> <laughs> the princess, now a goose girl, was not ready to part with Falada, so she paid the knacker to hang Falada's head in the archway that she and Conrad would pass beneath every day on their way to tend the geese. Ew. Does that mean we have to kill Gray? <laughs> Gray is, is mounted on the wall there. <laughs> Every morning, the goose girl would say, Oh, Falada, there thou hangest. And Falada would reply, Oh, queen's daughter, there thou gangest. If thy mother knew thy fate, her heart would break with grief as great. You realize how creepy that is, right? <laughs> <laughs> when they went to tend the geese, Conrad noticed that the goose girl's hair was long and pretty and purple. And <laughs> he tried to catch a strand of it. This annoyed the goose girl, so she used her magical powers to call the wind and blow Conrad's hat away. 
<laughs> and Conrad runs, runs away. Run away, Conrad. Conrad runs away. <laughs> After a few days of this, Conrad decided to put his foot down. So he lodged a complaint with the wise king. Hold on. <laughs> Dude, this girl you stuck me with is messed up. She talks to a severed horse head and uses a magic spell to mess with me every single day. I don't get paid enough for this. <laughs> exactly. I'll look into it. The king summoned the goose girl. All right then, miss, what's your story? Uh, forgive me, your majesty, but I have sworn never to tell a living soul. Okay then, here, tell this stove. I'll just wait outside. <laughs> <laughs> the goose girl waited until the king had left before pouring her heart out to the very, very quiet stove. <laughs> and explaining the entire sordid affair. The, <laughs> the king, who was listening on the other end of the stovepipe, heard everything. He returned to the goose girl and ordered her dressed in the finest clothes and invited her to dinner. She was so beautiful that the evil maid didn't even recognize her. After dinner, the king asked a riddle of the company. Let's say, hypothetically, that some evil maid was impersonating a member of the royal family and she was discovered. What should the punishment be? Oh, oh, I know this one! She should be stripped naked, put in a barrel, hammered full of nails, and dragged down the street by two white horses. Ew! And that shall be your fate. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> After this sentence has been carried out, the young prince, who was very quiet, married his true bride, and the both of them ruled over the kingdom in peace and happiness. Partially because the prince never said a word <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> the end. Yay! And the Academy Award goes to Leanne Renee Heber as.